Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Andres Lofty, and today I'll present you the work we did with Pavel Vesely and Carl Jinda on mass superstrings and how they unify the textual gamer set representations. In many biological applications, it's often useful not to consider the whole genome, but rather the set of all substrings of fixed length, the so-called gamers. In our example, for case equal to 3, the set of gamers has three gamers. Gamers and gamer-based methods are in the center of alignment-free methods, where we don't want to align parts of the genomic data as is done in the more traditional alignment-based methods like last. To be concrete, gamers have found use uh, in search engines for genomic data. There, if we have assembled data, traditional methods like BAST were perfectly fine, but if we want, but a lot of viral and bacteria data are not assembled, and here, gamer-based methods like BigSI shine. Other cases are in metagenomics, where using gamers, it's possible to get much higher speed of classification than using alignment-based methods. Or when we want to rapidly diagnose infectious diseases, for example, for for we can rapidly test from few reads whether a given bacteria um, is uh, resistant to antibiotics. And gamers are also used throughout biological analysis. For instance, in plasmid biology, they are used to study bacterial defense systems. And due to this wide range of uses of gamers, the gamers, the, their characteristics of the gamer sets differ a lot. The typical value of K used in practice is 31, but K, it can be anywhere from 3 used in plasmid biology to hundreds. And the sizes vary even more from several gamers to more than hundreds of billions in gamers. Here, we'll mostly focus on bacterial pan genomics, where the typical sizes are in the order of millions. And there are several big questions regarding the representation of gamer sets. And that is, do we have a representation that is mathematically tractable, that enables us to efficiently store the gamer set and efficiently index them? And if we want to use this as a building block for data structures and applications, it should not work only for some particular values of k and particular set sizes, but it should work in general and even for very non-traditional gamer sets. If we want to represent the set of gamers, it makes a lot of sense to represent them textually. This is because the gamers have a so-called spectrum-like property. It's not properly defined, but it means that there are only a few strings that contain all the gamers. Intuitively, it means that the gamers overlap a lot, and the textual representations can take advantage of this. For a given set of gamers, if we want to visualize this overlap, we can construct a De Bruyne graph. And using a graph where two gamers are connected by an edge if they overlap by k minus characters, k minus one characters. And we can use this De Bruyne graph to come up with a compact representation of gamer sets. We can compact the non-branching vertices of this De Bruyne graph to obtain unitics. In our example, we have six unitics in total. And on the green unit, we can see that we get a more compact representation, as all other gamers, as all other gamers, can be represented only their last letter, as their previous letters are present in the previous gamers. <coughs> Big advantage of Unitix is that we have several tools for their for their efficient uh, computation. However, as they were originally designed for assembly-like applications. They work very well for single genomes, but 
they require a lot of space when we deal with branching graphs, which are present, for example, in plant genomics. To resolve this issue, two recent works have simultaneously proposed the same idea on how to improve upon it. And the key idea here is not to stop at the branching nodes, but rather compact along the vertex disjoint paths in the graph. Here, for our graphs with unitics, we can, we can get down from six unitics to only three simplitics while not stopping at the branching nodes. The transition from unitics to simplitics has brought many gains, ranging from the fact that they are much easier to heuristically compute, they are more space efficient, and this, as a result, has sped up downstream applications. We even know how to compute them optimally in linear time. And we can improve the the compressibility even further if we relax the vertex disjoint property and rather compact and, and also, also allow chemo repetitions. And this way we obtain match sticks and in our example we can merge the blue and gray simplicity into a single match stick. Given a set of chemers, we, if we want to reduce the cumulative length we can create a corresponding De Bruyne graph and compact the non-branching vertices to obtain unitics. If we want to compress further, we can compute simplitics and even further by computing matchings. Looking at the De Bruyne graph, it might seem that we can't do better, but we can reframe ourselves. We don't need the De Bruyne graph. We can realize that what all these compute is just a set of strings that contain all the chemers as their substrings. Or alternatively, that they compute a single string that contains all chemers as their substring, a superstring of the input chemers. And what we are really trying to bring down is the length of this superstring. But there are other superstrings, and some of them have shorter length. But if we want to rep uh, represent the chemers as this superstring, um, it's not for free, as, as, as it no longer holds that all, all chemers, which are substring of this or this string are from the original set. Here, in our example, we can see that the chemer CCG is not from the original set, but it's present in the superstring. Thus, we need a mask to indicate at which positions this is. It tells us that the chemer CCG is not from the set, and there is zero at the corresponding place in the mask. And that other chemers, such as CGA, are from the set as there is one at the corresponding place in the mass. Note also that the masks for a given set and superstrings are in general not unique. Here we have the chemer GAC appears twice in the superstring, and thus it's only sufficient to mark it present at one place. And therefore, we can optimize the masks for specific applications. To transition from the RSPSS representations to mask superstrings, we take a set of strings, concatenate them into a superstring, and create the corresponding mask. Here, one might have a natural objection. How can we claim that all the previous representations are just mask superstrings if we introduce the new concept of a mask. However, in practice, one needs to delimit the sequences. And how this is usually done is that the strings are concatenated and somewhere else is stored at which positions a new string starts. 
but this can be viewed as a compressed form of a map. And other objectives from the RSPSS representations translate very naturally to mask superstrings. The cumulative length becomes the superstring length, and the number of sequences becomes the number of runs of consecutive ones in the mask. Note, however, that not all mass superstrings have their previous, have their corresponding RSPSS representation. Thus, mass superstrings not only unify the previous representations, they generalize them. But this generalization makes the problem of computing optimal superstrings a very difficult one. We might have different objectives and different objective functions for mass superstrings depending on the needs of specific data structures and downstream applications. These would usually both want to optimize the superstring and the masks, but these two naturally go against each other. Thus, we propose a simplified protocol. In the first step, we optimize the superstring. Even this step, computing the shortest common superstring of input tamers is empty hard, as we show by a reduction of the shortest superstring problem over binary alphabet. But nevertheless, in practice, we can compute on, we can approximate the shortest superstring heuristically. In the second step, we optimize the mask. The complexity of this might depend on the objective used for mask optimization and can be from linear for, for objectives such as maximizing or minimizing number of ones to empty hard, as in minimizing number of runs of ones in the mask. So even in this simplified protocol, both steps can be NP hard. However, as you will see, um, in practice, this is tractable as due to the presence of, of good heuristic algorithms and, in general, good structure of genomic data. So, in the first step, we optimize the superstring. And we propose two different approaches on how to optimize them. One is a global algorithm, which is the modified version of the heavily studied greedy algorithm for computing uh, approximated shortest superstrings. And the other is a local algorithm, which is a generalized version of profasm for computing simplicities. In the global algorithm, we always look on the global global graph and merge based on the largest overall. That is, in each step, we pick the two k-mers that overlap the most and merge them. And this we repeat until we arrive at a single at a single at a super string. In the local algorithm, we extend the k-mers locally. That is, at each step, for we we have some camer, and we find another camer that overlaps the most with this camer, and we do this in both directions. As we will see in the result section, the global algorithm gives better results, but as it needs to store the, the global state, it's more demanding on resources. On the other hand, the local algorithm gives slightly worse results, but it's much easier to implement, and it's more efficient on resources, most notably on memory. And both these can be either implemented or using integer hashing of k-mers or using the whole currency automatically. And as we've seen, if we compute the superstring from the input k-mers, there still might be different masks for the superstring. Thus, in the second step, we optimize the masks. Here, the objective might depend on the needs of the specific data structures or downstream applications. We investigated some basic functions 
such as minimizing or maximizing the number of ones in the nest, which can be done easily in linear time. And also focus on minimizing number of runs, runs of ones in the mast, as this directly corresponds to minimizing the number of sequences in the previous representations. And we show that this is NP-hard by a reduction from set cover. However, in practical scenarios of genomic data, we can solve it very efficiently using linear integer linear programming. And this is all from the theory of mass superstrings. And now we will have a, have a take a look at how this compares to the to the state of the art. We implemented the aforementioned algorithms in the C++ school program KML KML. That is, we implemented the local and global greedy for for approximating a superstrings from K, for gamers and we implemented them in two different variants. One based on integer hashing of gamers, and second based on apocracy automatically. And we focused mainly on bacterial pygenomics and thus evaluated it on a pneumococcus genome and pygenome and additionally verified the results using yeast genome and COVID pygenome. Here is a brief overview of the experiments we did. They all have many data points, so now we'll only look at simplified versions of the graph. At first, we focus on the super string plan, whether we can get any improvements over simple takes and match takes. And and here we can see the results for several values of k, where the local and global algorithms are in green and simple ticks and match ticks are in blue. And on the y-axis we can see the number of superstring characters per gamer. That is the total total superstring length divided by number of unique gamers in the set. And um, we can see that, are, that the global algorithms perform better than the match ticks, but the improvements are only slight. And this is because in this we are already very close to the lower bound of one character, one superstring character per gamer. And as superstrings are in general not very well compressible, they require around two bits per gamer. We focus on compressibility of masks, which can be uh, compressed a lot. And on, on the result obtained by global reading, we evaluated the four different objectives, four different masks. One, the default mask produced by reading, then minimizing, maximizing the number, number of ones, maximizing minimizing number of runs of ones and maximizing the number of zeros. Again, you can see the values for the results for different values of k and on the y-axis there are um, there are bits after compression per per gamer. And we can see that the minimizing of number of runs produces the best outputs. However, maximizing the number of ones it's almost as good, and thus it might it might be very well usable as as unlike um, minimizing of number of runs of ones, it is very easily computable. And then we put these two together and look at how we can compress our mask super strings, how we can compress the the set of string that is uh, underlying that underlies this mask superstrings. And here um, we can see the blue data is the compressibility of the superstring and the yellow is the compression size of the mask. And we can see that the results compared to uh, matchsticks and compared to matchsticks 
for global data are comparable. For most values of k, it performs slightly better, but we can see that for, for the value of 12, it performs slightly worse. However, this, this, this case is quite enlightening, <coughs> as we can see that the compression size of the superstring for 3D is much less than the, than, than the compression size for the matrix, but the mass, but the mass for 3D is much worse. So if there were, and, and this is because in 3D, we first, we first optimize the superstring, but for this superstring, there were no masks which, which are well, which are well uh, compressible. Thus, the parallel algorithm which jointly uh, optimized the mask and the superstring, it could perform better. It could potentially perform better than both of these. But in the fourth step, we look at some <coughs> more non-traditional data sets. So far, we've looked only at bunch genomes, but now we look at um, look at camera sets which are subsample. And here we can see that the that both global and local breeding perform much better than match takes and simple takes. And this might be very relevant as 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 well, subsampling of camera set is used widely across bioinformatics, for example in metagenomics. To conclude, we've shown, we've shown, we've introduced mass superstrings uh, as, a, as a unifying representations for the textual gamer set representation. That they, gen that they unify and generalize the current textual representation. We've seen that finding optimal mass superstrings is a problem that is very difficult in theory, but as we've seen, it's tractable in practice due to our two-step optimization protocol. We've seen that mass superstrings can be very useful for non-traditional data sets, such as those that don't have the spectrum like property. And we've demonstrated this on the better compressibility on subsample genomes. And due to the fact that they work well even for non-traditional data sets, we envision them as a building block for future cameras and data structures and other downstream applications. However, for this to happen, it, it might be needed to optimize the, the algorithms introduced, the algorithms we introduced, not just for uh, prokaryotes, but also for uh, eukaryotes, such as human genome. And unlike in the transition from unitics to synthetics, where we could just where we could just replace the unitics by synthetics. To, to transition to mass superstring won't be as easy as we need to represent additionally the mass. At the benefit that we won't have to store the, the starts of the respective uh, sequences. But as mass superstrings generalize the previous concept, it would new data structures based entirely on mass superstrings could emerge. And at, at last, um, as we've seen in, in the case of compressibility of the standard fine genomes, um, it might, for some applications, it might be needed to, simultan to, to propose a protocol for simultaneous optimization of both superstrings and the masks. And this is all for me today. I thank you for your attention. I'd like to also thank to my 
collaborators and uh, just to drop a uh, side note that um, we have that, that all of them have open PA positions, so if you want to join, you can contact them. And uh, I will be very glad to answer all the questions you might have.